Tomorrow, the National Book Critics Circle will present the black poetry group Cave Canem with the inaugural Toni Morrison Achievement Award, saying no institution has played such a definitive role in shaping the poetry of the 21st century. The co-founder of that group is poet Cornelius Eady, and while he continues to help shape the landscape of American literature, he's also expanding his own artistic pursuits. Jeffrey Brown spent time with him for our Arts and Culture series, Canvas. The angels are working overtime, the wings are far from flying. Cornelius Eady is a poet who's always been drawn to music, these days alongside guitarist Charlie Rao and Lisa Liu. We recently watched a rehearsal of songs Eady wrote in the last two years, what he calls pandemic folk songs. That's how I get through it. That's how art's about for me, right? You're also trying to find a way to translate your experience. Now Edie has another project to help preserve the place of poetry in the larger culture. He's director of Poets House in Lower Manhattan, founded in 1985 as a library and cultural space, one of the country's largest dedicated to poetry where poets, poetry lovers, and anyone curious could explore some 70,000 volumes, attend readings, and meet up. Last August, though, amidst already tough COVID times, a burst pipe in the building led to massive flooding and destruction, forcing Poets House to close. So, thinking about how we can better use that space. Edie is helping plan the physical and conceptual rebuilding and reopening. It's trying to figure out how we get to serve poetry, right? Um, we get to serve poets, we get to, get to serve the poetry community, we get to serve the community that, that doesn't know about poetry, mm -hmm. right? We need this location in this culture. But when you say it's needed, I don't know if a lot of people feel like poetry's needed or, <laughs> or a poet's house is needed. Yeah, yeah, believe me, believe me, buddy. Imagination is needed. You need to imagine. Where is the young black man? There is a blues that says, gone. Never coming back. For now, Poets House is putting on virtual hard hat readings, including by Edie himself. Rambling, can't keep still, but longs for four walls and arms that can hold you, keep you steady. Where is the young black man? Edie, now 68, traces his own imaginings to his childhood in Rochester, New York, his love of the library, and a teacher who encouraged him to write poems. One of his first was titled, Why? A response to the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and was published in his high school magazine. After it was published, I'd be walking in the hall and I noticed people would say, oh, that, guy, that guy over there, that, that guy, that's him, he's the poet. He's the guy, he wrote that He's poem. the poet. He's the poet. Ah, you heard yourself called a poet. For the first time. Yeah. yeah. And that made an impression. Yeah, that made an impression. Edie has gone on to write seven volumes of poetry while also teaching at several universities, currently the University of Tennessee. His book, Brutal Imagination, based on the actual 1994 killing of two children by a white mother who made up and blamed an imaginary black man, was turned into a play. Here is actor Joe Morton. I am not the hero of this piece. I'm only a, a stray thought, a solution. But now my face is stuck to lampposts, glued to plate glass. My forehead gets stapled to my hat. I am here. But here, I am not. Edie's work has addressed everyday life. But, and this was important to him, an everyday life often less explored in American poetry. The ordinary experiences of a black man in America. Some of the every day is just simply just, yeah, you know, sitting here talking to people, right? Some of the every day is simply just realizing that, you know, what, oh, uh, George Floyd is on the ground and there's a knee on his, on his neck and he's being killed in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Both things are true. Both things happen, mm -hmm. you know? And both things is, is, is part of what I am as a human being and also as a black person in this culture. So I do feel I have some sort of duty, some, some sort of obligation that while I'm here, you know, um, I add to that. 
helping create a larger space for the full expression of that experience, especially at a time when there were fewer African Americans attending major writing programs, led to what Edie is perhaps best known for, the creation with fellow poet Toy Derricott of an organization to foster black poets and poetry. It's called Cave Canem. Cave Canem was a part of that moment where basically there was a kind of a sea change. People started to find each other. And once they started to find each other, they started realizing the power that they had. The name was playful, taken from a 1995 visit to an ancient Roman site and a sign that translates to beware the dog. But it had a serious purpose. Cave Canem sponsored annual workshops, fellowships in university writing programs, literary prizes, and numerous other projects. The excitement and the need, Edie says, was felt from the start. To understand that you're not crazy, that you're not by yourself, that this political thing isn't, isn't really political. You could talk about where you come from, and you can talk about your family, and you can talk about, you know, all the stuff that you do when you're hanging out, and all this is black, right? Twenty-five years later, Cave Canem alumni, students, and teachers represent a who's who of contemporary American literature, including Pulitzer Prize and National Book Award winners, Poets Laureate, Presidential Inaugural Poets, and many other prominent writers. The talent, Edie says, was always there. So you're not surprised by what's happened? No, no. For me, it was just sort of like you just saw this wave starting to build. It was incredible. Me and my baby sitting in the rain, waiting on the sun to shine. In the meantime, poet and singer-songwriter Cornelius Eady has a new album titled Don't Get Dead, Pandemic Folk Songs. I have a recording contract at 68 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wild? Drop me off with your ass, that's not for me. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in New York. Congratulations, Cornelius Eady and Cape Canem.